mid update okay so what we've done here is first we jacked it up I've got four six ton jacks I've got those on the frame rails front and back through the tire under there just in case got that up the next thing I wanted to do was drain the uh, I wanted to drain the uh, fluid the uh, coolant uh, so the coolant's draining move that and to get access to that you got to take off the uh, this big skirt thing on the front which isn't bad you've got a handful of let's see what size were they probably doesn't matter nobody cares but they were uh, seven millimeter and there was two eight millimeter big ones so once those are off it just kind of slides out and pops out and you got access to your uh, your screw for your coolant uh -uh. So, I don't know how it works. I don't know, uh, I don't know if this is gonna drain empty at the same time. Either way, I pop that off so the pressure would go down. It'll still get crap everywhere under these hoses, but that's just gonna be the nature of it. Just gotta keep the dog out of the garage. So, but we'll let that drain while I go get some donuts with the kids. Saturday morning ritual. And uh, we'll go from there. So I jacked this up. I hope it didn't go too high. So I'm pretty tall, but you know, my. That's about resting my arm right there on it. If I gotta reach down there, it's definitely gonna be easier to go from the bottom. But if I go any lower, I won't fit. And I gotta say, man, this thing, I've never had one of these before. This is like 30 bucks at, 34, $35 at Harbor Freight. And honestly, it actually helped a lot, even with just something as stupid and simple as taking that thing off. Typically, I would've just, uh, scoot under there and just kind of done it i gotta tell you though the i mean you're still having to reach your arm up and still do all that stuff but it definitely uh doesn't wear you out so much i mean just just kind of you know even just beating your back up kind of you got to kind of wiggle your shoulders to get underneath there and kind of push and it's got six casters and even with these deep concrete cracks um i got caught once in that corner right there um, or like two of them, two of the wheels fell in there or something like that. And I had to kind of shake to get out of it. But other than that, it was pretty nice. So, heck man, should have bought one of those forever ago. And so when I jacked it up, I had to make sure I got high enough to uh, to do it. So where are the whys though? I had a little experience here a minute ago. So the way most cars are, these modern cars, especially that, you know, like the unibody ones, they, uh, they always tell you to jack up on these things. Well, that might work great when you're only going up high enough just to get the tire up. But like an idiot, I didn't really think about it. I just threw the jack on the uh, jack on there, started jacking it up so I can get these these under there. Obviously, as these are bigger, it's harder to you got to go higher up to get on there. So, and I never really looked underneath the car before. This is the first time I ever had the car this high. And uh, I never looked uh, looked underneath to kind of figure out what looked like I could support it on. Couldn't find anything easy on YouTube or anything like that. And so I just jacked it up there. And uh, as you can see right there, that slipped. And the car luckily, well, I shouldn't say luckily first, the car fell. Luckily nothing was underneath it. I wasn't anywhere near it. You know, I was back, you know, three feet away with the jack it wasn't that high up but it did slip and it did pop this off this big plastic thing 
pop that off. Luckily, did not hit any of the car, didn't, def didn't do anything. Kind of popped a little piece of sheet metal under there, just popped it out a little bit. I hammered it back straight and uh, it worked fine. But, I mean, broke two of these. I get some replacements to put those back on now. You know, and luckily it's all plastic, so everything just popped right back in. But um, definitely, uh, <laughs> for doing that, I was a little nervous doing the rest of this. It took me probably way longer than it needed to to jack this up and get that on. Just because after that, I was hyper, hyper aware of what I was doing, and every little pop or crunch or noise. I stopped and uh, I stopped and uh, checked it out. So with the jack stands, um, so Harbor Freight, you know, I, I bought these forever ago, um, and these these two are from Harbor Freight, and I, I know it's Harbor Freight, right? But hey, I'm not rich, you know. And honestly, with as little as I use a lot of these tools, I mean, if I go spend 400 bucks on something, it's gonna take me 30 years to pay that off and by that time you know thing doesn't work anyways so there's my justification take it for what it's worth but anyways uh i checked these ones out online and uh when they called the recall those ones weren't done but i opted to go for these and now what's funny is i mean honestly they all look like they're made out of the same damn factory it looks like they're just painted different so it's not a huge comfort to me I guess if these are defective um, and uh, but I got these ones from O'Reilly's they were like 67 bucks um, I saw the ones at uh, AutoZone um, I mean I looked at Home Depot Home Depot had couldn't buy them in store but they had basically the same thing if you look at them they're Pretty much the same. A little bit of a difference is, and I don't know why. I don't know why these were failing. But if you look at this one, and you look at the foot, you can see it's just the angled foot right there on the ground. If you look at these ones, you can see they welded like a little plate around here. Other than that, I mean, literally. And they are exactly the same. This one is powder coated silver, and one is powder coated blue. And actually, when I was at Harbor Freight, they actually didn't have even. They, they only had like a three ton jack stands. They didn't have six ton jack stands. And so, yeah, these are probably overkill. My car weighs like 3,300 pounds. But, geez. I have a family. They're way too precious to me, and I am way too important to them in their life for me to risk getting smushed. So, and that's kind of the same reason. So I bought an engine stand, and my dad gave me one, and it was one of the littler ones, and actually I wanted to buy the big one at Harbor Freight, but they didn't have it in stock anywhere in Utah. And so this one was a little bit bigger, but uh, I ended up buying one, because again, I just, I didn't know the condition of, you know, the one I, I looked at the one my dad had given me and it was not in the greatest shape and it was missing pieces and uh, I just, I may not buy, you know, I, 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 this may not be a great piece of equipment, but at least now I know what to, what it's been done. I know that it's not been overloaded. It's not, you know, been left outside and rusted internally or something like that. I mean, maybe that's just to make me feel better and it probably is, but. That one's rated for a thousand pounds. The engine only weighs about, I mean, I looked online, it looks like it weighs like 400 pounds, if that. But, like I said, I wanted to get a two ton one, but they just didn't have them in stock. So, I was a little nervous. So, I actually, at Harbor Freight, though, on the same note, at Harbor Freight, I looked, because I was trying to figure out what was going on with this yesterday. Or the other day and I was going like what the heck how did this actually work and I was like you know and looking I was like this kind of seems like this was not originally part of it and uh, but I couldn't figure out what this slot I figured the slot was for something but I you know wasn't sure when I was a Harbor Freight 
you know, and they had the same one. I was in, when I was at O'Reilly's, I had the same one as well. But what it is, obviously, is it's a chain. Just a chain with a hook and then a bolt that goes through that little hole right there. And so now I know that I am missing that. And so one of the concerns I have now is, especially now that I've jacked the car up, you know, I bought this 4,000 pound D-ring. My plan was to hook this D-ring onto there and then hook the load leveler. But seeing that chain made me realize, oh, that chain's probably there so that I can get a higher angle. So I'm guessing that what I'm worried about is if I look at this and look how high this is. That, if I pull the engine out, so I'll get down about where that is. I'm gonna have to pull the engine up and my load leveler, but up, load leveler is probably going to hit this somewhere around there. So I may need to get a chain. Now I have like a 30 foot tow chain, but because it's just a slot, because it's just a slot right there, I can't actually pass chain through. I have to actually have like a cut chain. So what I may end up doing is just going down and getting like some hardened chain and uh, getting a, you know, grade eight bolt to go through there and then a, a length of hardened chain and then just use my, uh, use my D-ring on the end since I won't have a hook to hook onto my load leveler. So, yeah, I'll probably need like 10 inches of chain. Wasn't planning on that, but not a big deal. And it makes sense now, that hole that was there, that I put that in, that hole did not exist. And this did not exist, and this did not exist. So, there we have it. So, let's see what's going on here. Oh, look at that. Okay, so it is coming out of there. Oh, I was worried that was going to fill it up. We're not even close. Not even close. All right.